Hi fellas and welcome back. Today I'm planning to talk about gerrymandering and redistricting because as you all know Democrats did impose a very 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 gerrymandered map on Illinois and they also have done similar things in Oregon. Uh, we are still waiting for the end result in the state of Maryland and it is probably going to go on. But today I'm making this video because Republicans have been hitting back and I'm talking specifically about the maps in two states, North Carolina and Ohio. So let's take a look at them. So this map in North Carolina has become law. It has been signed into law. Uh, okay, I don't know if the Democratic governor has actually signed it. I don't think that he has to. But, uh, well, as you see, it is quite favorable to the Republicans. It does rem remind a lot about the original map from uh, the past Congress, the one that was very gerrymandered because it had only three Democratic districts and ten Republicans. Now this one is a bit different because Republicans are going to gain the extra district. This map, the state of North Carolina gains an electoral vote and that means that they also gain a new US representative. So Democrats currently have five, Republicans have nine, no, sorry, uh, Republicans have 8 to Democratic 5. And now Democrats are going to be back at 3, at least 3 that are safe. We don't know about J.K. Butterfield, that one is very competitive. And uh, we are probably going to see many elections where that one is up for grabs. Now, of course, this map is very problematic for Democrats. The problem for Republicans is that their maps have been stricken down by court before, and that could very much happen again. For example, Greensboro, a area with a very large African-American population, is split between three Republican districts that are all not too Republican, like Republican plus 26, that's the biggest, while we have other Republican districts that are, well, okay, uh, I'm still look looking for it. Alright, you know, there are, there are not really that many Republican districts that are, like, more than plus 25, 26 in the state, but you get the point. So the problem is that, uh, for Republicans, that this one could be taken down in court as it has been before, but it looks much less gerrymandered. I mean, you're not seeing these thin stretches going from city to city, as you see in Illinois. But let's take a look at Ohio, shall we? Because this is not yet decided, but Republicans have control, and both the State House and State Senate have proposed, have proposed a map. So let's take a look at the State House map. So Republicans actually give Democrats two districts, but they also put one of their own men in quite a precarious situation. Steve Chabot, who represents Cincinnati right here, I think he is definitely someone who would, at one point in the next decade, lose re-election uh, with this map, and that would go Democratic, because Cincinnati is a, it is a city that has been very, very Republican before. But it's now a emerging democratic stronghold of Western Ohio. And it has not gone for a Republican presidential candidate since 2004. Meanwhile, Republicans have been growing in strength in this part of the state. But the thing is, this district even gives Republicans a R plus 38 district here and a R plus 31 there. And let's not start talking about uh, the, the rest of the map because they have many very strong districts, so there's no reason to really put this guy in danger, even though they are... Uh, this is quite uh, strict against Democrats in Ohio. It is sort of a payback for Illinois, I guess. But I would say I would rather have two Democratic districts up in the Cleveland area and shore up Steve Chabot with, I mean, his neighbors here are both R plus 30. Uh, and more, so this is that should not be a problem. But there is another map. That was the state house map. Now this is the state senate map. It is a bit different. For example, Steve. No, sorry. Where the hell is Steve Chabot? He's there, and he is an R plus nineteen, which is safe. It is solid. What I found strange is that, yeah, Mike Carey, who just won election. Uh, in Ohio, uh, special election, he will have a R plus 8, which is not too safe, but it probably is going to be unproblematic. But Ohio's third, 
a democratic district is only D plus 12. And they are really opening for a lot more competitiveness by making that just D plus 12 and then making the surrounding Republican districts R plus 8, 9. All of these three could be competitive, which would make the state much more targeted for political ads and uh, stuff like that. I would just argue that uh, they should put this democratic district in the center of the city and make it, make it as blue as possible so that the people in that city actually get the democrat they are voting for. Otherwise, yeah, Chantel Brown, who just also got elected, very strong district up there. And otherwise, I guess the map uh, is quite typical. But yeah, these maps are basically giving Democrats two districts, which means that the Republicans are gaining one since the map is losing a district. And as I said, this is sort of a payback situation because what Democrats have done in Illinois is really one of the worst gerrymanders that you're ever going to see. I mean, there are a lot of Republicans voter voters living in the second district here. There are a lot of them in the 14th district, the 13th and the 17th, and they are all being, I guess you can say, disenfranchised by this. But that was everything I had to talk about today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.